happened, folks? It's the first first on the Beko 1987 channel in 2021. The machine here, the Mina Blizzard CX1. I've used a couple of them. I remember Mr. Parwaz had one when they were really new, and I used that. And that's about it. And now we have our first one in for repair. Sounds pretty terrible. Sounds pretty motoring terrible. So, don't actually know how to get into these things. Got a couple of ideas. We're going to have a crack at getting this apart, see what's wrong with it and see if we can make it live again. Yes, hello, my vacuum cleaner chums. How are you today? Yes, this is the cat and dog model with the normal red cat and dogness on it. And all we have is this, obviously. I don't need the floor tool and the wand to repair it. So this is all the guy dropped off. Look, we've got this dusting brush, which is has seen some use. The guy uses it to clean out his car. <laughs> So that's probably going to explain a little bit of why it's broken. Yeah, hose clicks on there. Pretty well indeed, but we don't really need the hose. We just need the machine because we have the bin. Seems, yeah, it's all there. Pretty clean. Not too bad at all. We have our filter in here very nicely indeed. There's the filter cleaner there. All pretty standardy stuff for Amina Blizzard. But the problem is it sounds pretty bad. This will make the birds fly away. <laughs> it doesn't sound too healthy. I'm not going to write it for long. It's gone, Jim. The motor has gone. Yeah. So, what we've got to basically do is try and get this apart, bear in mind I've never taken a Mila Blizzard apart before and see how familiar it gets. Now on the other Mila's there are normally some screws hidden under the switches and this is no exception, exactly the same setup as on the S5000 series, just got to be a little bit cautious of where you pry so you get the clips. Oh my goodness, where are you? Ah, end first, then at the side, and there they come out because yeah, there's two screws there. I can already see two screws at the back, and obviously there's no screws underneath, so it makes sense. No, you're not going outside, bird, it's freezing. One of the reasons we're filming this morning is to keep the warm the place up without going to fire the heating up. Oh, we have a crevice tool, very nice. And there's two screws here, standard Miele Torx, whatever the size is. There we go now. Where are we still being held on by? Ah, never had one of these apart before. Let's take the filter out. No screws in there. Ah. I don't want to leave them with the thing. Ooh, ah, that doesn't come off. Ah, that does there. Eh? How the heck does this work? I might have to pause for a minute and. Yeah, I think I'm going to pause and work this out so we don't just have to watch me struggle for several minutes. I think in roughly the same vein as the Mila S8 and the C2 Compact and whatnot, we've just got to unclip the outer shell. I've got movement out of it down here. And then the trim bit at the front, which comes off, and that then reveals two clips, which hold the front on. The question is how? 
How do you do it? I'm sure once you've done it once, it's incredibly easy. <laughs> this is my first time. We are breaking the meal of virginity. Oh, crikey. Mm. More screwdriver. Ooh, that's its little secret. You do have to remove this very well clipped on part there. And then look, one, two. That's why you don't lean on these things. Oh look, we have ourselves a very detailed build sticker look. 24th of the 10th, 2016. It's now the, okay Google, what's the date today? It is Sunday the 5th of December 2021. There we go. So, not that old at all. And then I'm wondering if, ah, ah right, shush. So yes, outer shell stays on, this comes off, look. There's the speed controller, made for me that, oh, I bet that's great fun for pneumatic modding, if that's its own little separate thing there. Oh, very nice indeed. Right, don't need to look at that. Look, yeah, this just lifts off now. I had it all cracked apart, bar being able to lift it off. So, here is our Mila in it. Think I was wrong in the previous scene. This won't be the speed control. But it, that's the motor that runs, where is it? It's not in there, the self-cleaning cog. Don't, don't think we're gonna crack it apart to have a look today, because I don't wanna to get too cocky with this job. We already don't know what we're doing. We shouldn't add a load of complexity into the mix. I don't think it's going to be long before, you know, even such a lowly person such as myself could afford a used meter CX1. They're certainly about a hundred, £150 working. Problem is when they don't work, most of them just go to the tip rather than go onto eBay as spares and repairs, which is a pain because I can't pick them up then. Right, how I don't know if we need to remove those top bolts or not. Oh yes we do. <laughs> then I can unplug the cord reel. I want the cord reel to come with me. Ah, there we go, there we go. Oh look, here's some, here's some familiarity. Right, you stay right there and we'll unplug you and then whatever. We wanted you, ooh, ooh, look at, look at the grim. Oh, hello. Ah, look at that. That is your average standard ball bearing and ah, look at this look this is your average standard motor fan wobble obbling oh dear i do believe that this poor thing has exploded its motor bearings and it's probably no surprise so that's that bit done really we're now about to get very familiar with ye old standard Miele motor disassembly so I won't concentrate too much on that, but we'll come back when we see what the state of the bearings are. Of the carbon brushes as well, that one's slightly seized. Eh. This one's slightly seized, but they're not worn. Oh dear, right. Get our bigger screwdriver to knock this out. And yeah, we have a very good, there we, there we are, very good back bearing, but yeah, that's what's left of the front one. Well, in fact, here's the outer race of it look nothing else at all oh no wait i lie there's the bottom dust cover i also found this look lovely piece of metal that's been shaved off of a combination of i think it's probably come from 
the fan case itself. Ooh. But, uh, I mean, no, really, the armature looks pretty, pretty scuffed up. I don't think it's really going to run very well anyway. I don't know. We'll give it a clean up and see, but because um, obviously I don't want to stick a whole new bearing on it, and that's cream crackered as well. Well, whilst I wait for the owner of this machine to message me back, he's just read it, over whether or not he would like to give me a fair bit of money, because, you know, spare motors sat on the shelf have a value. I could put these into meters all day long. It's got to pay the price for me to put it into his. And it will fit, even though it's 1,600 watts. But that's not confirmed yet. What I thought we would do is have a look at the state of inside of these, because I always was a little bit worried about, you know, a bagless Mila. Everybody was, you know, Mila are bagged, and they jumped on the cordless bandwagon, and I don't know really, it's, it seems to be, obviously, pleated HEPA filter, we might crack that open in a minute and see what is actually in there, but you know, pleated paper filter, which I think you can, oh no, you can wash it, look, yeah, look, it just comes out, okay, look, yeah, it's actually not in bad condition, especially since the guy said he used it for the car, it just seems fine dust, and I don't know, I cannot help but think that that might be what killed the motor, because look, if we pop open the working back bearing, look, it's full of dust in there, I think this just isn't a fan of fine dust, which obviously cleaning the car is, Ooh wonder what the state of this thing is, the Mila Suicide Triac, whatever it is, sensory thing, not too bad, but yeah, look, you see, and then that overheats, and then as you know, one of the solder joints on the back goes kaput, and then it's dead anyway, so yeah, bit of a, bit of a poor show in terms of fine dust, but equally, it could be full of fluff and detritus and everything else. Ah, and he said yes, he would love me to fit the spare working motor to this. So, we have ourselves a bit of a different slant. We shall win. I'm going to keep this because this is a working doodah. But pretty much all of that is scrap. Whatever, you can be scrapped too. Let's go and get the Victor V9. Wakey, wakey, Victor. And for context, this is the first time we're using the Victor V9 since I fitted, or we fitted, the new bag on Christmas Day morning. What are we going to be in now? Late February? Early March? Crikey, I've got content coming out of my ears. Look, there's another ball bearing. Ball bearings everywhere. There was one rolling around here as well. Thinking about it. Oh, well. What? There's a filter. I've never heard of that before. So there's a bit of a sidetrack here because this could potentially be a problem. There is a HEPA filter moulded into here with a completely con it's completely destroyed. Wow, let's I suppose we better I can't really get it out because it's gonna be pretty critical to everything. Um ha ah, do some googling. 
Okay, so this is, I think, what's going to kill a lot of these. That motor bearing is 100% down to this. That is the post motor filter. I just had a slightly comprehensive Google. Cannot find it anywhere. I would imagine you can only, well, you can only buy this probably as an entire motor unit. They probably don't sell that because it's all, yeah. Look at it. This is where all your fine dust. I don't like these. <laughs> this opinion form, these are <gasps> tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Oh crud. Right. I now have to try and find something to fit this. I think I'm gonna tell the owner and I'm gonna tell him that you can't buy these and if you want this fixed, you know, send him a used motor. But I think they're going to have to get a little bit creative here because, crikey, this is obviously needed. Otherwise, this is just going to spew junk. There's another one. I'll just... I'll put, I'll, I presume... You, ah, this is the post. Please tell me you can get this off from, you know, normally. Yes. It's never been off, but... Right, so yeah, unless you want a good portion of everything you pick up to go straight out of there, that's terrible. And yeah, look, this is this is our little, this is just saturated, it's raining down. Wow, ha, <laughs> what a pile of junk. What an absolute, oh, it's no wonder they don't really push the CX1 range. I mean, you know, you look in the marketing, it doesn't really exist. They want you to get a Triflex, I bet that's junk as well. Right, let me clean up and find something to fill this hole. And what my solution basically is, is to stuff a Dyson post -mo pre motor filter into, you know, put a round peg into a square hole. And that will catch some of the dirt. I'm still speechless over this whole thing. Right. I mean, I might knock a bit of money off now. I might knock a bit, but it's a problem, really. I'm only really charging in the value of this. I just want to do this video because I like it when we uncover things like this. Utter catastrophes of machines that are about to become very cheap. I'm very excited. I've got a couple of spare Mila motors still. So, <laughs> watch this space, folks. Right, now we have to line up. The motor actually screws into here and hangs from the top, which is reasonably decent. I'm also now a bit panicking because they're putting a 1600 watt motor into this. Hope it's not going to overwhelm. <laughs> Hope it's not going to overwhelm anything. It doesn't really need to worry, does it? It's overwhelmed anyway. Right, I didn't see where this fell out from. Bit of a pain. Where did you come from? What lines up with you? Uh, Oh, right. And then we've got it. Oh, I can't even see the flipping holes line up. It's sort of yeah, twisty, twisty that way a bit. I don't know really. You probably could try and poke, hang the motor first and then screw it in. But then you'll run into a problem with the cord wheel, I think. I can't even work out where you are. But I'm going to get this screwed down. It's about 20 minutes later. I nearly had it back together and realised I'd forgotten this. I don't know, really. You probably could slot a cartridge thing in it somehow. Or maybe sandwich a bit of HEPA flow bag around these bits and clamp them together. We're going to stick with this for now. OK, we're back together enough to test this thing out now. Yes, Felix, you're probably going to run away in a second. Is it going to run? And the power switch is on. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, yeah, it runs. That's good enough for me to now Carry on, put the rest of it together and tidy up. And with it looking a bit more like a Mila CX-1. Oh. Yeah, that's where the exhaust there goes. Oh, yeah. Technically, 
200 watts more powerful than, well, technically it's 1600 watts more powerful than when it entered our place, but oh, bless you. So, me and the CX1 Phoenix, do we like them? No, we don't. I think these are about to become very cheap. I cannot find this if you, and I'm going to say worldwide because these are more popular in America. Where do you get this from? I'm assuming you have to buy a quite hefty component from inside of it. Our Dyson sponge filter seems to be working fine. And yes, this is, this is what's going to happen. Look, this just overheated so much because it couldn't expel its air because that filter was so clogged because so much dust has been through this thing because the pre-motor filter is as i had suspected and others had pretty flipping terrible and i for one can't wait for us to get our first one that is you know ours and has tools but hey we've had our first little taste now so comment down below have you found cheap me the blizzard yet if so what's the rough going rate where you are for an all right example with some tools here it's about 150 ish dropping slightly i'm not paying 150 pound for this crikey but now I know that normal cylinder motors, now that we know that normal cylinder motors fit, the world is our lobster in terms of getting these up and running again. So, <sighs> sorry if I've offended anybody who loves their the CX-1, just don't use it for fine dust. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed, and I, and probably another Mila Blizzard CX-1, will see you soon. Bye bye.